Cricket today. Top players, razzmatazz and a carnival atmosphere. As thousands of fans arrive for the T20 Blast Finals at Edgbaston. But back in the 1950s and 60s, it was small local cricket clubs that were attracting the big names and big crowds. And here in Norton in Stoke-on-Trent, thousands of local fans were treated to a close-up view of the greatest cricket player in the world when the legendary Sir Garfield Sobers signed up for their local league club. Sobers is arguably the greatest all-rounder the game has ever seen. Six on the charts, a world record. And he's done it! He's done it! And his six sixes in one over is one of the most famous moments in sporting history. Six on the trot. Goodness gracious. Sobers, finest cricketer in the world. He could bat, he could bowl at pace, he could bowl spin, either orthodox spin, leg spin. He was so athletic, he moved like a panther. He got everything. And for those Staffordshire players who got to walk out with the great man, they were incredible days. And one of those players was the former captain here at Stone Cricket Club, Stuart Wood, who I know as Dad. He was an amazing player, was uh, Gary. Um, when he bent his back, and when he really put all he'd got into it, he was as quick as anybody. He would hit you on your leg before you realised what the line and length of the ball was. He was very, very fast. In 1965, my dad played alongside Gary Sobers and another West Indian great, Wes Hall, in the final of the Rothmans Cup. It was an exciting time. To have them in the same side as you was really absolutely wonderful. And they went on to greater things, obviously, the two of them. And, um, but at that stage, Gary Sobers was quite the most fantastic cricketer I'd ever set eyes on and it was a great pleasure to play with him. Gary Sobers signed for Norton Cricket Club, based at the Miners' Welfare Institute, and it even made the local news. Gary, you've just come back from India after touring with the Commonwealth team. What made you decide to come to this class of cricket? This class of cricket, I think, has done a lot for me. And I look forward to coming back here to play in the league, to get away a bit from the sunshine, and to look forward to playing among the league players. Sobers was part of a tradition of internationals who came over to play in the best English leagues, like here in the North Staffordshire, South Cheshire League and the Lancashire League. There was money to be made in the leagues, but that wasn't the only thing that brought the West Indians to England, as the man himself explains in this rarely seen archive footage. I think league cricket has helped West Indians tremendously, and I think that all West Indians, or all overseas players, should at least try to get into league cricket. I am sure the cricket would improve tremendously. Now it's small to reach. And that message made its way back to the Caribbean. That's a good shot. Where the next generation of superstars were listening. Everybody in the Caribbean thought that England was the best place to, to learn the trade, to develop, you know, and also, you know, you heard a lot of stories, a lot of players have come here and they talk about, you know, um, the pitches being green, the ball seeming around and swinging around and, and the different um, weather conditions. And, and, and to me, um, you know, having it, that way where it's difficult and you've got to constantly be making adjustments could only help your game. The league's got a rich history of some of the best players that would have graced the world where cricket is concerned. Okay. Sir Gary Sobers passed through the league, Sir Everton passed through the league, uh, Wes Hall passed through the league. There's just numerous individuals, you know, who would have made their mark at cricket itself would have played in the league. Meet Gary Barwell and his team. For the past few months, they've been mowing and preening to make sure the pitch at Edgbaston is second to none. But just like any gardener, they've been keeping a close eye on the weather. I probably look at the weather probably five or six times a day. Um, so many different apps. I've got five on my phone. I watch the radars moving around. And it's just for, few, you know, for the for up and coming events. The weather has such an impact that important games have been won and lost because of it. When it's not disrupting play, it's making it. What's the worst type of weather you can encounter? Well, obviously, uh, rain's going to be the one that everybody looks at. But the biggest one for us is the wind. It dries the surface too quickly. 
OK, Dan, well, the weather doesn't just affect Gary and his team, does it? It also influences how the game is played. Absolutely. Well, for a start, it's much harder <laughs> to catch the ball with cold hands. But when you see them polishing the ball so they end up with one smooth side and a rough side, it's so that it seems through the air as their ball and swerves. The more, more moisture in the air, the more it swerves, the harder it is to bat. So it can affect who wants to bat first, who wants to bowl first. It can change the whole dynamic of the game. So weather's really important. Absolutely. Catch. <laughs> Just about. Welcome to the joys of the cricket season. If rain does stop play, it's not all bad news because players and spectators can come inside for one of these. But let's not forget, tournaments have been won and lost because of the weather. Take the 2013 Ashes. Heavy rain on the third test at Old Trafford forced a draw, which in turn helped England lift the famous urn. Humidity and cloud cover has a big influence on how the ball moves. The drier the wicket, the more the ball will spin. The soggier it is, the slower the game will go. That's not all though. Maths fans, listen up. If rain does disrupt play in one day cricket, a special algorithm has been drawn up to help set a target teams need to hit to win. It's called the Duckworth-Lewis method.